Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video. Yes, the circus is back in town. EA have revealed their first trailer for F1 24. Yes. Oh my god. I'm so excited. I really am. I have to say I love all my fellow content creators because when these reveal trailers come out, their voices actually increase by three octaves. They really do. Yes. Oh look, look, you can do that now. Oh look, that bit's new. Oh that bit's oh look, you can do that now. You can it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> anyway, let's get on with the reveal trailer. It's literally, I think, about 30 seconds long. But let's have a look and see what we got. Okay, hold it right there. That is not a single frame from the game. That is real life Formula One, as you can see. No way. It, it went past the quick. You probably would have missed it because your eyes can't actually process information that fast. But you can if you pause it. <laughs> and as you can clearly see, this is from real life Formula One. So not even a single frame of graphics from the new F1 24 game. Yes. OK, let's continue. Still real life Formula One. So let's go to the press release now and see exactly what it says about the new F1 24. Now, one of the things that I was most disappointed to find out is that it will be released for the PlayStation 4. Yes, yeah, the old generation of consoles, which means, of course, once again, we'll have no new game engine for the F1 game. No, because they can't do it all the time. They're still supporting uh, the old gen consoles. Now, this is nothing new for EA. I do believe that uh, FIFA 14 came out for the PS3 six years after the PS4 was first launched. Yes, FIFA 14, that was the last game that EA made for the PS3, a sports game anyway, and that was six years after PS4 was launched. So it's no surprise really that they've continued to support the old generation of games. But it is a surprise to me because the WRC game, which came out a few months ago, was only on PlayStation 5. Yes, so that's very strange behaviour. Obviously, they've done this because they feel that they won't get enough sales if they just stick to the current... I call them current gen now, because that's what they are, the PS5 and the Xbox, whatever you want to call it. I don't know, load of shit. Um, so, yes, um, they're obviously thinking that they won't get enough sales because there's still a, a very strong user base of PS4s. Obviously, it's shrinking all the time as people upgrade to PS5s, but at the moment, I think it's still... A, Somewhere around the 75, 80 million people have still got PS4s out there. So, yeah, it's quite a strong user base. And obviously, they wanted to tap into that resource. And that's why they just couldn't be bothered. And so they've re released the game on the last gen, as well as the uh, current gen consoles as well. Now, one of the other things is it's going to be launching on the 31st of May, which is the earliest a Codemasters game has ever come out. It's not the earliest time a Formula One game has ever come out. That little beauty is this one, F1 2000, which, ironically enough, was also made by EA Sports. Yes, this came out exactly one week after the Grand Prix, the first Grand Prix of 2000, which was in Australia. Yes, they tried to actually coincide it with the actual uh, championship start, but unfortunately it was delayed for a week because back in those days there was problems with having to make lots of CDs up, whereas nowadays they don't even have to bother, do they? Because no one buys stuff on CDs anymore. So yeah, because they had to make these CDs up, um, there was a problem with the duplication plant, apparently, try saying that, very, very quickly. There was a problem with the duplication plant and um, unfortunately it was delayed by a week. But that's the earliest F1 game 
uh, currently on PlayStation. It's ever come out, F1 2000, I'll say, just one week after the season started in Australia. So beat that code, Masters. Uh, don't go, you know, falling all over this and saying, oh, look what we've done, because no, you haven't, actually, because it's all been done before. Like everything in life, everything's been done before, and there you go, so shut up. <laughs> so, yes, it's coming out at the end of... Uh, may obviously if you go for the championship edition you'll get it on the 28th of may a couple of days earlier and i do believe that's going to be 90 pounds yes in earth money or english money whatever you want to call it 90 pounds yes so that's going to be great absolutely great now what improvements are going to be made to the game well let's face it it's had what a seven month development cycle they still just released a patch for F123, so there's still a you know a couple of the uh, work experience lads still still beavering away at F123. So you know the development cycle for this current game has obviously been about seven months total. It can't have been any more than that because it's obvious that they didn't even stop doing like the patches and that for F123 until about November, December time. So, you know, obviously they've got two teams. We all know about this two teams. We've got one team that works on uh, one game for one year and another team works on another. We all know about that. And unfortunately uh, for this year's game, this is the same team that worked on F122, which by most people's standards, especially if you played on console with a pad, was one of the worst F1 games that uh, EA or Codemasters have produced for quite a few years. So expectations are really high that this is going to be a great F1 game once again, yes. Once again, of course, there will be no breaking point because that's done by the other studio in a two-year development cycle, so there won't be any breaking point. But they have promised a revamp to the driver career. Nothing about my team, which is great because I can't stand my team, but the driver career is going to get a revamp. So that should be something to look forward to. It's probably going to be the only thing to look forward to, in fact, but there you go. Anyway, let's go to the blurb, the press release, and see what that says about F124. Hit the track with Alpine, Huss, McLaren and Williams. 2024 season team cars and liveries as part of the early pre-order offering with additional items available at launch, including up to three days early access. Yes. Today, Electronic Arts announced that F1 23 players can jump into time trial trans all-new 2024 team cars prior to this... Ah, that must be what the patch was all about that came out at the weekend. Yes, they must have... Yes, OK, I've got it now. OK, this weekend's opening race by Peeled in F1 24 coming May the 31st across PlayStation 5, Xbox Series crap, uh, play... <laughs> PlayStation 4, Xbone One, and PC via EA app, Epic Game Store, and Steam. For a limited, uh, for a time limited period, a new loyalty program rewards drivers who own any of F1 2021, 2022, or 2020 with a 15% discount when they pre-order the F1 24 Championships Edition. Oh, that's great! Yes, yeah, not the standard one, just the champion. So for 90 quid, you're probably going to get about two pound 99 off of that. Yes, yes, fantastic! Oh, I can't wait. I'm going to pre-order the Champions Edition right now, right now, because I want that 15... And why only 21, 22... I've got all of them, Co-Masters. What kind of loyalty do I get? I've got I've got uh, bloody 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20... And all of them. What's, where's my loyalty? I should, get, I should get these bloody things for free, surely. Surely. Anyway. <laughs> uh, what else have we got? As a bonus, players will also receive the McLaren and Alpine 2023 F1 eSports liveries. Oh my god, just in time, just in time, because unfortunately eSports has completely died now. Yes, completely died. If you don't believe me, go and look it up on YouTube. There's plenty of articles about it, but uh, F1 eSports currently is completely dead. Yes, so that's that's just what we need, Codemasters, EA, just what we need. We need some eSports liveries for a championship which is completely dead right now. Yes, well done. A pretty much like your F1 game, completely dead, completely dead. <laughs> which will seamlessly carry over for, to F1 24. Wow, 
Here we've got an actual statement here. For the first time, our F1 23 players can now connect immediately with the 2024 season with some of their favourite teams ahead of this weekend's first lights out, said Lee Maffer, Senior Creative Director at Codemasters. Our full reveal is coming soon and we're bringing players an overhauled career mode, a new EA Sports dynamic handling system and so much more. Didn't it have a dynamic handling system in 2021? And didn't it have one in 2022? I'm sure I, I remember reading on the back of the boxes something about, you know, improved or dynamics, handling system. I'm sure it is. They just make it up as they go along now. Alongside a second wave of new season liveries coming at the end of April, players who pre-order will receive several valuable items connected directly to F124 at launch. The digital exclusive Champions Edition equips drivers with two new Formula 1 icons. 18,000 pit coin and an F1 World bumper pack featuring resources for single and multiplayer gameplay events. They will also receive up to three days of early access starting May the 28th and all pre-orders come with one bonus VIP podium pass. Players pre-ordering the standard edition will receive five... Oh, that's it, yeah. So if you if you order the standard, you only get 5,000 Bitcoin, but if you order the chat, you get 18,000. Yeah, what a slap in the face to everyone that is, isn't it? Yeah. Unbelievable. And an F1 World Starter Pack. Stay tuned for the full rundown on F1 24 in the coming months to keep up with the latest F1 game news. Blah, 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 blah. I think that's the end of the press blurb from Codemasters. Yeah, that's just a thing about the company. So there you go. Oh, what's this? We inspire the world to play. I'm not going to say a word. I'm not going to say a word. I am not, if you want to know, just refer to my video I made at least two years ago now saying that EA will eventually destroy the F1 franchise. They've already got rid of F1 Mobile. That's been completely sunsetted now, yes. And I'm pretty sure within the next five years, the F1 games will suffer the same fate. I'm sorry to say, but uh, if you are a fan, but this is what's going to happen. They will suffer the same fate and F1 would probably disappear for a few years we won't get any f1 games until some other developer comes along and picks it up but unfortunately it costs a lot of money to actually have the f1 license so i don't know of anyone that would have to be bigger than ea to actually pick up that tab and actually continue with the license after it's pretty sure that i say in the next five years it's all going to be gone because ea are just following the same road that they've started since the good old days, and that is they just buy up all these studios, run them to ruin, and then just get rid of them. Yeah, and that's what's going to happen with the F1 game. It's good. It's not yet. It's not yet. I'll give them a good five years of F1 games, but then I can see that they're definitely going to disappear. So anyway, that was the exciting news of the... Not excited at all, because there was absolutely nothing in that trailer. That was like a Marvel movie trailer. All style, absolutely zero substance. Absolutely zero. I know it was a pre-release or pre-hype trailer, you know, a tiny little snippet. But still, come on, come on, just give us something. Just anything. What about two seconds of gameplay from the latest? No, you can't even do that. You can't even do that. It was just absolute, a big pile of nothing. And I'd just like to thank all my other YouTube creators out there for making a mountain out of a molehill once again. But of course, they have to be excited because, you know, they get little bungs, don't they? They get little bungs for being happy about the F1 games. Fortunately, I don't, so I can tell you the truth. And the truth is that F1 24 is going to be pretty much the same as F1 23. There'll be some improvements, but the uh, the graphics engine and everything else that's associated with it, all the bugs and everything else, will be exactly the same as F1 23. Exactly the same. Because until they drop the last-gen consoles, they will not be able to uh, make a new engine. And let's face it, they don't want to make a new engine. They don't want to make a new engine at all. They didn't make a new engine for the WRC game, did they? No, they just stole someone else's, the Unreal Engine. Because they couldn't be bothered to make an engine from scratch. Because you know what happened the last time they did that? Well, the result was F1 2015. Yes, and we all know how much of an absolute turd that was. Yes, but they actually had to build that from scratch. Because it was on the next-gen consoles at the time, which was the PS4. 
They couldn't use any of their development tools that they had for the PS3. So they had to start from scratch with that game. And that's basically why F1 2014, which was the last game on PS3, was absolutely rubbish because they were spending a lot of time doing the next game. And, of course, when the next game came out, that was equally rubbish as well. It didn't even have a career mode, for Christ's sake. It didn't even have a career mode. No. No, because they they spent so much time trying to build this engine. Let's face it, Codemasters are a software developer, but they don't build game engines. I mean, Rockstar was exactly the same back in the day. The early um, Grand Theft Autos, that wasn't even their game engine. The Renderware platform was developed by someone else. Codemasters, Codemasters, Rockstar just got hold of it and decided to use it for the Grand Theft Auto games and the result of that was unfortunately they ended up in court and had to pay Renderware oodles of money millions and millions in compensation because obviously this Renderware platform I do believe at the time was a free open source uh, program and of course Rockstar used it in the Grand Theft Auto series and they made absolutely millions and billions of pounds off those games and there's these poor developers of the renderware platform they got basically nothing out of this deal and so that's why they went to court with rockstar and managed to get you know lots of money back in the end and it's the same with codemasters they can't be bothered to spend all the time and resources to make an engine from scratch when they can just steal someone else's <laughs> yeah so that's probably what will happen eventually when they move to just the current gen consoles they will eventually probably just steal the unreal engine but to try and make the unreal engine work in an f1 game it's going to take more than a seven month development cycle and they haven't got any more time to do it in so it's far easier just to carry on using the old game engine forever i can see f1 turned into r factor 2 they're going to still be using that game engine in another 10 years if things don't change and the only people that can implement change is us the buyers the people who buy these games we can implement the change by simply saying no i'm all right thanks mate i'm not gonna buy it this year no not until you improve it i'm not gonna buy it and there you go so we we as the people are the only ones that can stop this of course if you're very happy with the f1 game and you like the new versions every year then that's great that's great i haven't got a problem with it i'm not trying to you know have a go at you there but most proper Formula One fans know that the F1 series has been in decline for quite a few years, quite a few years. And we're just itching for that next gen feel because all the games just look exactly the same now as they have done for the past four or five years. Because they're still using exactly the same game engine. But ahead in the past, there's no improvements. So until we vote as the public with our spend and don't spend on these games, nothing else is going to change. Anyway, that's enough for me. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. You have been awesome as always, and I'll catch you in the next video.